Giving back has always been our culture at Subaru of Gwinnett. During the Subaru Loves to Help initiative, we're partnering with our friends at Rainbow Village to provide coats, shoes, and socks to those dealing with homelessness. At Subaru of Gwinnett, our hope is that these essential items will not only keep those in urgent need protected, warm, and dry, but that it can have a significant impact on their mental and emotional well-being. Subaru of Gwinnett, more than a car dealer. Visit SubaruofGwinnett.com to learn more. Die-hard baseball fans wait around all year for four words, pitchers and catchers report. So today, we are talking with two Atlanta Braves executives about the upcoming season, marketing, sponsorship, and everything you need to know to enjoy your time at the park. All that and more today on the Marketing Mad Men podcast. They say marketing is a madman's game. So now we turn it over to the Marketing Mad Men with Nick Constantino and Trip Joe. Happy Saturday. Welcome to the Marketing Mad Men. Trip Job and Nick Constantino here live at the Battery, and it's time. It is time. It's, it's been a, it's it's time been a for tough winter. It's, it's time for this place to liven up again. It's time for the, the air to be warmer. It's time for Hope baseball. Springs Eternal. Springs. Pitchers, there you go. Perfect time. Pitchers Springs. and catchers reporting. Yeah. I mean, Very it's, excited. It's time. I'm, uh, I'm excited. Uh, a lot of action uh, during the offseason with the Braves. It's yeah. uh, interesting to see what's happened, and... Uh, you know, that's, that's the baseball side of things. I think today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, how does the baseball side and marketing come together. Yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, one of the things that's crazy is how the sports calendar has, like, rounded itself out, right? It, it's going to be perfectly timed. They add they added that 18th week of football, which goes right in. you got Super Bowl, and you go right into Pitchers and Catchers Report. There is no gap in any of this, which is well thought awesome. out. But it's you're in that little lull phase right now, right? You, you're waiting, you're waiting. And then all of a sudden, Pitchers and Catchers Report, and then we're off to the races for the rest of the year so um yeah and so um we have chad clark and drew king with the braves for us and the reason that these two guys are here is because i want to talk about the nitty-gritty of marketing i want to talk about the sponsorship world connecting with fans and while we can always talk to a marketing director i think that the sponsorship team has a unique view on how the fan experience the sponsorship experience the ticket sales all come together um because if you are selling bad sponsorships it negatively affects the visibility and the performance of the team. And I don't you, think most people know that. You so. guys are like uh, Alex for the business side of the equation. Yeah, a little bit, I guess. Yeah. You I mean, you're thinking, you're thinking a little bit long term. You're thinking a little out. bit short term. You're yeah. thinking how do you pull it all together? Yeah, well, we're trying to find the best roster possible, you know, on the sponsorship right. side. Yeah, so we, we, wanna, we, want, we want to align ourselves with the best companies that are out there. Let's do quick formal introductions. So, Chad, why don't you start? Sure. My name's Chad Clark. i um, been with the Braves. This is my 21st season. Started with... The Braves Radio Network, when it was at Clear Channel uh, as a rights holder, and then the Braves brought the uh, the rights back in house in 2009, and that's uh, when I came on board. So it's been a good run. Yeah, awesome, Drew. How about you, bud? Drew King, also a director of corporate partnerships. Uh, been with the Braves for I guess this is my 12th season now. Prior to that, was uh, in the college sports world, so I have some experience in the Southeast with Southern Miss, uh, Auburn. Uh, Georgia Tech along the way, so from uh, Golden Eagles out there to the top, you know, War Eagle to all the Auburn fans out there, all the folks I've met along the way. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's it's been an awesome run. I mean, we, we are really fortunate to work for a fantastic organization. And, uh, I mean, as the more you talk with folks that work in our building, you hear this over and over and over again. It's a, it's a really well-run uh, group. And uh, we're lucky to be a part of it. Yeah. And I will say from my experience, so again, just some outside looking in. So in addition to hosting the show, I also run the the Braves Radio Network from the sales side. So we work together a lot. And Mm -hmm. we have a very unique relationship in sports as to we really work as a team. And I know people say that, but like we share neighbors. We are meeting about potentially doing, helping Mm -hmm. some radio stuff in the meetings and clients. So we have a pretty intricate knowledge of how the team operates and how each people work, work within those parameters more than most teams carrying broadcast well, rights you, do. You've got to be aligned. And I think that's, you know, every now and then we probably all see the instance where, uh, you know, a sports team, the Braves in this case, maybe have a premier partnership and all of a sudden the media rights, their biggest competitor shows up, right? Mm-hmm. That's and, right. And, and yep. it creates conflict. It does. And it has in the past uh, when we were rights holders. Uh, we still worked well with the team, but... Yeah, when you own the rights to something, you pretty much feel like you're in control. We have a unique relationship yeah. with Dickey Broadcasting, 680 the fan on the Braves, for the simple fact that we own the rights uh, and you're our production partner, and then we do something on the side that helps you to be able to go out and sell locally 
uh, and network to yep. your partners as well. Yep. And you'd mentioned also win -win. working together. It is a win-win mm -hmm. and working together with uh, with partners that we both work with. You know what yep. I'm saying? Is trying to get them on board and build a robust campaign around not only 680 the fan and their day parts, but mm -hmm. within Braves. Bravery. Within Braves. And, and because our <clears throat> intentions are aligned, we celebrate success together mm -hmm. differently, as opposed to sometimes when you have when you're the rights holder, you're in direct competition because yep. you're paying for yep. those rights, and then you're selling the competition. You're like, wait, why would you be a sponsor of the team? We could do it for half the price, mm -hmm. right? That does not present itself here. It presents itself as how do these two pieces fit in together overall? And you know, there's some times where there's going to be some head bumping, but overall, when we our intention is to one help the team. Two, help the battery, and then three, help partners succeed within those parameters. And it's it's pretty damn unique. I can offer yeah. some context there because having been at those those colleges prior, um, you see good relationships, you see bad ones. Um, this is as healthy of a relationship between media partnership and club as I've seen along the way. Um, I, you know, I think it, it comes down to everybody understanding where your respective guardrails are, and then from there being able to figure out how to cross-platform things together, how to build marketing plans together. It's just been a really healthy relationship. I mean, and speaking to that, it was healthy enough prior to the move to the battery that we're you guys up. Yeah, yeah. we're neighbors. extended for yeah. another what, you 10 years. Sign a lease with us, yeah, that, that, right? Yeah, well, yeah that doesn't, doesn't give us more healthy you, than you that. Don't, that's, like, that's pretty much like you're going through a divorce and you're going to put your ex-wife in the house right next to you. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, it, it wouldn't yeah. happen if this was a bad relationship. Right. Exactly. So, um, but I, but know, I think that's a key, though. I think, it, and love to get your take, but my experience through the years, you know, marketing and consulting is that um, that's through having open dialogue and really talking about what you want. And my very first experience with this was 1996. We were, a company I was with was the official sponsor of the Olympics, U.S. Olympics Committee. Right. Okay. Our chief competitor ran a contest, you know, sweeps that you name it, for tickets and events and all at the Olympics. And we had to fight it. And it was very hard because they're still about the dollars, yeah. what we wanted – and you, you, if you don't have a partner, you don't have the alignment, mm -hmm. it, it creates a lot of challenges. And so what maybe some of the successes for, you know, for people who are thinking about entering into sports marketing, how do you think about that? How do you work with uh, potential clients out there to get that alignment? So for sponsors to get yeah. into sports marketing, yeah. you know, it's one of those where it all starts with relationships yeah. and just kind of digging deep into the relationship and who that person is and their team at the respective uh, company. Yeah. And starting to understand, you know, kind of where they're going and their objectives, you know, where they've been, where they currently are and where mm -hmm. they're going. And the beautiful thing about Braves now is we're just not selling signage. We're selling media. We're selling out of mm -hmm. home. We're selling activations. We're selling experiences to where data gathering, data gathering, part, all, yeah. all, you, you name it. I mean, it's kind of one of those where I feel like I'm walking down, you know, the street in New York City with a big trench coat on and just open up like, yeah. what do you need? I've got, you yeah. know, but in a way, yeah, I'll though, take the good stuff, <laughs> whatever I have, everything one, is good. One stuff. pant leg rolled up. Yeah, of course. Right. I know that game. <laughs> so it's really just kind of getting to know, you know, that company and, and what their future goals are and trying to show them the value of what our fan base can bring to them and what the brand can. And mm -hmm. it's, it, it's it's as simple as that, really. Yeah. And I have to just imagine. Kinda, I have to imagine you're both pretty senior. You're dealing with something similar to I am, where a lot of times they don't know. They just they, don't they know. They enter into the right. relationship wanting because, you know, it's a bank and they saw another bank do it, or it's a, and they, yeah. they think they have yeah, to be or there. Or they think that casting a wide net with small funds is going to do something for them. Or, where, or they're using know, the wrong metrics to measure success. Correct. Like yeah. it's, you know, yeah. like is it impressions? Is it engagements? Is it data? And when you, you have to get to a point in your sales career where you go stop being the person asking the questions of the person that start gives the answers. Yeah. Let me tell you why that's wrong. Let me tell you what we've seen success with Viv. And I think that the, for the tenure you guys have, and I'm sure you deal with similarly, a lot of time this is reworking the brains of these people to make sure they understand what the best can come out of this. Not not what you want, but what is the best outcome for this for these inputs? What's the best output? And uh, do you see that pretty often? Are you dealing with clients? And I know it's probably the wrath. I mean, the bigger the company, the more people they have working yeah. on this. But I have to imagine on a daily basis, you deal with people that metrics are wrong, what they're how they're going about it wrong are you seeing that more or less as you get more tenure to salespeople? For, for sure i mean metrics and data is a big part of what we do um and and we'll talk about this a little bit more in in detail later when we kind of deep dive into uh the data side of things but back to your when, when you were talking about alignment that initial alignment that we mm -hmm. look for with a partnership it usually starts with an intent to differentiate right like a, a partner these days partners are it's so easy to get lost it's so easy to get lost in all the the, the opportunities are out there, social media and digital, that 
everywhere you turn, you're going to get hit by a thousand advertisements a day. Yep. So how do I stand out? Yep. How do I do that? Is that through taking, a, 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 in our case, the marks and logo use that the Braves have and being able to activate upon that in the marketplace? Yep. And the, or is it creating content from that, that that we then leverage on digital and we take to 680 and we build on these types of things? Is it a trigger promotion? Is it something right. that uh, creates an action in response to something that happens on the field? This is the, that's, I think, oftentimes the initial intent is how do I stand out? How do I do something a little bit different? Got it. Catch an eye. Because um, in the ballpark, we can only put so many competitors in the same category. Yeah, right. You're not going to throw 50 insurance companies up at once. You're going to have even in non-competitive situation, three or four. Yeah. So you can get out of the clutter a little bit through us. And then from there, it's, all right, what are your what are your corporate interests? What are your, how are you positioning your brand? Is it visually? So are we looking at, are we trying to build a brand? Are we looking at yeah. signage? Are we trying to tell a larger story? Are we talking radio and TV? Yeah. And then it becomes about the assets we have at our disposal and trying to figure out which of those pieces is best tasked to telling this particular brand story at, the, at this particular point in time. It and is. that evolves as time goes, too. Well, I was going to say, you both have, uh, you 12 years and 20 years, um, y- you've probably seen that evolution. I, mean, I remember the early days, there weren't all these opportunities, right? It was, okay, let's uh, let's look at signage. Let's look at uh, maybe some spots, you know, yep. maybe maybe a VIP experience once a year. Yeah. And, and that was kind of it. Yeah, 20, 20 years, years ago, ago. It, was a, it was a, you know, outfield wall sign yeah. and some season tickets. Yeah, yeah. it was a billboard. That's yeah. all it was. It was a billboard. There yeah. was no yeah. activation metrics around right. it. You know, <clears throat> I will say... One of the things we talk about on the show, data only tells half the story, okay? So data does a great job of showing inputs, outputs. You know what it doesn't do is show emotional connection. Right, exactly. And there is no bigger emotional connection in this world than a fan to his sports team, especially the bigger, the higher yeah. up you go, especially with a team like the Braves. So realistically, you are taking, and it's something similar to we do, you are taking that passion and using that to trigger some sort of transaction and marketing relationship. But it's rooted in the passion that the fans already have right, with you. You find that affinity in the passion. And yeah. you're trying and, to extend that. And the data that. opens the door, really, opens the when door. you think about it. You, you present the data to get them interested. It opens the door. And then from what Drew and I do is, you know, we can bring them down to the ballpark. Hey, why don't you come? Why don't you bring right. your family? It makes it Show them, hey, have you been to a Braves game lately? Let me show you what you're missing out. And they see, you know, 40,000 people going crazy. And they see the cleanliness of our sponsorships and how we present our partners to our market and our fan base. And, you know, from there, we hope that that opens many doors. So, no, I yeah, think uh, absolutely. And I think the story of what the Braves have done on the field, off the field, uh, is tremendous. When we come back from the break, I kind of want to dive into a little bit of that. Maybe you can give a little bit of background of how the Braves on the business side has gotten to the point where you have so many things to offer. So you're listening to the Marketing Mad Men on Extra 106.3. We'll be right back. There are hundreds of families who need help with their loved ones. As part of our Subaru Love Promise, Subaru of Gwinnett has partnered with Plan Pet Hood to help with animal transportation, adoption fees and clinics, and outreach vaccine clinics to help create a better world for animals. We've supported over 320 animals, 541 vaccinations, and 211 microchips during our Subaru Loves Pets Month initiative. To learn more about how we support our furry friends, go to SubaruofGwinnett.com. Hey, Atlanta, Hudson Mason here. Is a new roof still on your to-do list, but you've been delayed due to rising home service costs? Well, here's a fantastic solution from Accent Roofing Service. Zero down, zero payments, and zero interest for a full year. That's right. You can get your new roof now and start paying next year. Act quickly because Accent's incredible offer of zero, zero, zero with a 12-month deferred payment option for a lifetime roof system isn't going to last long. Contact the craftsman at Accent Roofing Service today, accentroofingservice.com. Now back to the Marketing Mad Men on Extra 106.3 FM. Welcome back to the Marketing Mad Men. Trip Job and Nick Constantino here, and we are talking Atlanta Braves. And, and during the break, we had a great conversation. We were, before, we were talking about how far um, the Braves have come and why you're now one of the premier sports entities, I guess, um, and businesses want to be there. And I was, I was thinking back, too. I said, I started – Listening on the radio in the early 70s. I think 1979 was my first visit to go to a game. Um, was here in grad school in 1989 when there were 5,000 of us on a Friday night, and that was it. And have lived through, you know, the move to um, uh, Turner Field and now to the Battery. The, the evolution is amazing. So how did that 
how did that happen? What are your your views, Drew and uh, um, Chad, as far as getting the Braves to this point today? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the important fact. Not the evolution. Is how have we gotten to the point where they are that preeminent brand? Because yep. a lot of people are trying to steal and to copy what, what you guys are doing. And that's yeah, clear. Yeah. So, you know, I think the evolution is great. But how are we at this point now, I think, is important. Because that'll set yeah. the tone for the rest of the conversation. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a key differentiator. I mean, there are a few things that make the Braves stand out and make us different from our peers. The battery is one that is a, a huge key to our success today. And it, it's, it's become an engine that feeds the team and the team feeds the battery. Yep. So it's a... It's a symbiotic relationship that, that to your point, uh, I, I think the number I last heard was over 150 different sports teams or organizations or clubs have come on site as far, I mean, from around the world. I, I personally toured the Sydney Cricket Grounds once. I mean, to, huh. to give you a sense of how far people are coming to try to see how do you build that type of symbiotic relationship. And so we've obviously been really fortunate to be on the front end. And that kind of vision, I, you know, I, my personal take is that it, we're fortunate to have the type of ownership structure that we have um, and the types of leaders that that lead our divisions that fall under that Braves ownership. So it, a lot of people may, may not know this, that we're one of the few publicly owned uh, teams that's out there. So Packers is one. They have a different structure than us. Yeah, but, but Packers have fake stock. That, so yeah. let's not, let's go, let, like your stock, because I, I have one. And I bought it from my dad. Stock, He's like, right. this is worth nothing. Just keep it. Right. And because it's worth, it's just a sign on the wall that says owner of Packers. <laughs> there's no financial. There's no voting. There's nothing. But as, and as somebody who works for an organization with that structure, what we see on a day-to-day -day basis is we see really good leaders put in place who report to other really good leaders and a board and all of the things that it makes each of those decisions and especially major billion dollar plus investments like the battery Atlanta and the ballpark were it makes those decisions uh, truly really vetted out to a deep level. And I think that everything is very well thought out. It is all with the intent of providing the fan the best experience we can. And, uh, and that ultimately has come back. It sounds like lip service, right? It's like, Oh, we just want to do the best thing for the fans. Yeah. But when we did that and we provided fans exactly what they were looking for, they consume it more. They yeah. get involved more. It's and they provide it things that, that are easier get, for us to do our jobs. Because of the structure, you get the resources you need to That's elevate exactly the right. experience. 100%. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. yeah. And, 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 yeah. and talk about, if you will, just so how does that lead to signing Riley and Acuna to long-term deals? How to talk to, to AA, taking Alex Anthopoulos and extending him? I mean, all this fits into that grand vision. You can't have one with the, the other. So yeah, you did a great, a great job point. setting the table. But now talk about how that translates to the product that's going on in the field because I think ultimately that's what you're, ga you're gauged upon. As great as all yeah. this is, right, this is a line item on a balance sheet. Yeah, if you that's go so where back the to team is... Yeah, if you go back to 2015, 2016, when you hear a stadium announcement, the Braves were going to move their ballpark, and you, you, you deal with all the PR that comes with that, negative, positive. Um, we're at a place at that point in time, when you've, you've backed up, what, eight years now, um, we're trying to sell a vision of, look, we are headed toward being a bottom five payroll in our current, uh, our, our current ballpark. And, uh, and, and that was pretty steady. I mean, the Braves, pretty much, if you look back, with the exception of one outlying year in 2013, I think we spent $100 million roughly on payroll mm -hmm. up until that point pretty consistently. And their team is spending 250 dollars Yeah, and, now, and today, $100 million payroll in baseball would, would be bottom five. Yeah. Um, uh, so, and now we you look well at this today, athletics. and now you're the, you're the Atlanta Braves. Eight years later, you have a, this battery property. The ballpark is selling out 56 games last year. Uh, you have unprecedented demand where you've stopped selling season tickets. You're, you're waiting list only now. So the demand is through the roof. And now you're at a point where you're a luxury tax offender. And you're, if you'd asked people that back eight years ago, they would have thought you were dreaming, right? Yeah. But to say now you're a luxury tax offender, you're truly a competitor for any player in the sport, that is a direct, tangible result that fans can see about baseball. Yeah. That had yeah. to do with yeah. a, a mixed use. And development. I agree with that. Yeah, and then you and then you couple the development on top of that. That's a huge commitment to our fan base. Yeah. When you think about it, to yeah. the marketplace, to yeah. to the brand. Yeah. When you put that kind of money, and especially in, the evolution, and this and is not the evolution a bad Turner of this field, fifty-seven but like acres, right? Where you were in Turner Field, where that connector came in. But just, just think traffic, about the, the fact that it, everything was. It's a, an experience now. I told well, you, it's my, an experience, my, my but also think about the to... fact that we're just an anchor tenant. Yeah. When you think about the Braves yeah. and the Battery Atlanta, the Braves are an anchor tenant. We play eighty-one nights out of three hundred sixty-five yeah. days a year. So what else does this property have to offer? Yeah. We've got people that come here and An park awesome and stay station. over four hours. We've had over 
an awesome radio spend station. Spend the night. I mean, my first experience was you went to the varsity, then you went down to um, Fulton County, and then you got out of and town. And then you got the and heck out of right. it. Right, and that was it. You, you that was it. That's out. a lot of logistics, no though. I mean, that's a lot of traveling in the <laughs> middle right. of a connector, combining <laughs> three highways into one oh, to go downtown. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. you know, and I think one of the, look, the back, the back end, how the company is structured. Like I always heard that, oh, you know how much they're going to spend next year. It's a line item on a balance sheet. It's like, no, no, it's not. That's not how companies work. Like you don't know how the corporation is set mm-hmm. up. You don't know what's here or there. All you know is publicly facing the right maneuvers have been made. Yep. Demand outlet is bigger than supply. Mm-hmm. So get aboard now. And that becomes perpetual. And everyone wants to come to games more because what if they're not there? What if this sells out? What if I can't get season tickets? How many stories do you hear yeah. of people who wanted season tickets? They had the chance to buy them. They didn't. Now they don't exist. Right. All that does is drive up the mistake. Or it's great to hear the stories of people that in 2017, you know, oh, I came to the first week of games and the battery wasn't open. It was just the ballpark yeah. and the plaza, which was true. Right. I mean, we opened mm-hmm. it up, but we had all the structures yeah. up. We had a lot right. of leases out. Yeah. And then the evolution of that over the over time from growing. our partners, all of a sudden they're like, we want in. We it's want still, in it's more now. Now we're here. In every, it's growing in every direction. Correct. Yeah. And then speaking of expanding outward, we haven't even touched the radio network. We haven't even touched Ted Turner and TBS yeah. to expand well, that Well, the way. history and the heritage is really the foundation of this brand when you think about it. You think about it. You take, you take away Boston. You take away Milwaukee. You bring Hank Aaron in 66 here. Um, and... Just think about that heritage and and the history that it, that came along with that in the 70s with Hank Aaron. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, we're going to be celebrating his 715th on April 8th this year, which is going to be great. Um, the his, or the the anniversary of that, um, and then you you evolve into Ted Turner yep. buying the team and him owning a massive super station yep. that everybody the in the country and, and, and in some and in some. Parts of the world could it was pick the Cub- up. It was right. the Cubbies and the It was Braves. the Cubs were, and WGN and, and, and the Braves and that was also and the time a lot of people were traveling more and they were moving. Mm-hmm. Remember, like 70s and 80s, people didn't just get up and move away yeah. from the families. You were still pretty community knit. But all of a sudden, with the advent of people moving, right. now all of a sudden, Mets fans, the only way you're going to catch your Mets is watching TBS and well, watching Well, and, and, and then let's, let's dive into that. So let's dive into who we had on TV right. and on radio. I mean, think about the family lineage of the Carries. Right. Here you had in Chicago, you had Harry Carey, who is globally known and yep. beloved right. and then you had you know his son skip yep. who another hall of famer who was with the braves so you, you have those synergies with those two teams there and yeah. because because of that i mean the braves yeah. Became America's team, quote unquote. Yeah, and then the so. ne- and then the network now because of geographically where you are and the barriers to entry to well, start a team. Yeah. I mean, you you're you spread out such a far reach. I mean, just from what I see from our first party data, I mean, you're touching Virginia, you're going to yeah. Puerto Rico, St. Thomas. Yeah. I mean, these are all people that are not like once a yeah. week. They are actively consuming a product. So when you start casting, and it used to just be a ge- geographical net, now you're catching just a sheer numbers. Well, net. and when massive. we say we're Braves country, that's intentional. I mean, if you think about it, we truly are Braves country. Um, It's funny. We're in a political year right now, and you're thinking about the division of the country. But no matter what political side you're on, if you're a Braves fan, you're part of our country. Can can Alex run for president? I I'd vote so. for him. Yeah. <laughs> it's Canadian, so I'm not sure. I, I, yeah. There's a, I there's a legal part of that. Gig. I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, well. Uh, he speaks he speaks way too directly and in plain English know. to be a president. <laughs> there's no code that you have to decipher. There's no way he would win. Yeah. To, right. speak of to your points, guys. I, I know the things that uh, a thing that that differentiates the Braves and and uh, that we benefit quite a bit from. The, to Chad's point, the superstation set the foundation for all of this. Like having a nationwide level of interest in the '90s obviously is something that it, we have been able to kind of reawaken in a, in a new set of media climates and TV broadcasting situations and yada yada. But Braves country is a is one of the largest geographic marketing territories in sports. And what that means for a business or, or a marketer is it's what where are we legally allowed to allow a partner brand to extend their logo rights? And for us, it's six states. It's unusual. It's a it's a big territory, so we can extend logo rights all the way to Mississippi and in Tennessee and down. Right to when you the compare Florida that with uh, NBA or NFL, I mean oh, yeah. it's it's right. unheard of. And that that space uh, with the uh, Great Migration, I think they're calling it, of the last few years after mm-hmm. following COVID, has now grown to you know Atlanta, I believe, is the sixth largest DMA now, or we're close yeah. to it, six or seven. Yeah. Uh, and then we've also got in that space Charlotte, twenty second, Nashville, 29th, and all the different, I think thirty fifth in upstate South Carolina, and you you put all that together, and you have more households than New York City and Chicago combined. Yeah. So we're talking about a leverageable space that is a, a, a across state borders, um, and it allows us to tell uh, a really strong regional story. Uh, and to your point, back to the the radio network, now having grown to 170 stations, 
I mean, these these days, it's radio doesn't really do the term justice, right? Yeah. We had 16 million streams last year yeah. that were averaging 32 yeah. minutes a stream. Yeah. So that's not like an accidental click. Yeah. You're, right. People are consuming baseball in a completely different way than you can than you can consume football. When you when you watch football, you can take your entire Saturday or Sunday and sit down in front of the TV or go to the game, mm-hmm. and your whole day is about football. You can't do that for a full season of baseball. Yeah. So, what in turn happens on our end and, and in our roles is we look to capture how can we provide the content people are looking for in as many ways as possible. So there's TV. We've, we've got the, what, the strongest radio network in pro sports now, which Chad will touch on in a second. But you're, you're going to, you're leaving work, you jump on the radio network, and you're listening on 93.7 or 680 in your commute home. You get home, and you pick up the kids from school, and you go to the grocery store. Now you're on your headset streaming through an app or through a tune-in service. Then you get back home, and you say, hey, Alexa or Google yeah. Home or whatever, Play Braves Radio, and you're listening on a streaming yeah. device. People are consuming it in such a different way yeah. these days that it's it's um it's made our jobs fun because it then yeah. gets back to how do you the yeah. brand want to get yeah. people and where do you like that and what's so, organic to your message. So and, and the story and everything, I think you've set it up well. It's it's amazing. So now we've got the consumers what they're doing. Let's go back to you said it before. Um, you have so many different ways now to work with your partners. Well, I'm seeing more activations, really. I'm seeing yeah. partners getting more in tune with organically, holistic type built activations. They want to get in front of their potential customer. They want to get in front of their current customer. They want to retain them somehow. Advertising is great. That's a great way to continually brand uh, your company, your, your product, your service. But to be able to show that off um, if they're not coming to your website or to your brick and mortar, these are ways that they can show that off it through a partnership with the Braves at the ballpark or at their location through, you know, with using our community efforts and stuff like that. Driving people to their locations, get product, mm-hmm. brand, service, that whole deal. Um, that's one big way that I've been seeing a lot of companies yeah, kind of die. And that's the dying. natural evolution, right? It is. And I think it's, it's just, because ADD, everyone has ADD, right? That's why I just cut chat off because yeah. ADD is horrible. Yeah. So like, <laughs> yeah. that's just how it works. So, but, but the point is, is that because you, your attention span, you're bombarded with so many messages, you have to yeah. hit people from multiple points and you have to almost dictate action. Where it used to be, you throw up that billboard, they're like, oh my God, now I remember that from last night. I have to shop there. Now it's, no, you got to remind them because by the time they leave that game, they got to get their car from valet, bring kids home, go to bed, wake up in the morning, start it all over, go to their job and then go and how many messages are you in that time frame so i think the evolution has been yep. along with people's behavioral patterns yeah. that we have to that's where we have to really yeah go. activation's big and then in the digital space yeah. the di- just you know with with everything that's come about with the internet and uh and so forth the digital space has been huge yeah what do you tell so one of the things i've always seen in these spaces is clients have very good intentions to to utilize these sponsorships the right way. You paid a lot of money for those marks. What is your plan to utilize said mm-hmm. marks? And a lot of times that's where the conversation stops because they don't have answers. So they want to do the sponsorship. They want you guys to do all the work, but talk about the back end. Talk about how to utilize those marks and everything the right way. Yeah, I actually talked about that uh, in our staff meeting that we just got out of. Um, we, we, do a, uh, we do a really remarkable job uh, out of our department at not just uh, – helping at helping brands to maximize the rights that we give them to use our marks right so we're going to give you the braves logo we're going to say hey take it to point of sale help you physically in stores around whatever your retail outlet is take our mark in there build pop let's let's figure out how we how to uh create transactions and help uh differentiate differentiate you at the point of sale as well and don't uh, do this two weeks in advance of when you want to use it, <laughs> right, it takes i mean I, I hate to say that but that is People who haven't done it before think that okay, well, I signed the agreement. A week from now, we can start using all this. Yeah, now I can right? go get I can go get some POP right. up in uh, 250 Home Depots in the yeah. southeast, yeah. right? But that type of activation at ground level, we have we're lucky to have a a well staffed, well trained, and with great experience service team that after Chad and I and our counterparts are are able to contract a partnership, we have this team that's that's really good at helping them understand how to maximize the logos in the marketplace. How many teams? How many teams? Professional sports teams in the countries? Do you think are having that much follow up with their clients? And I think I, I think ever, all of them are, are trying to to some, to, to some capacity. Absolutely. Um, 
but I think that is something that helps us stand out yeah. based and on I'm client sure it helps feedback. With the renewal rates also. Because yeah, now absolutely. they're seeing that the, the value becomes tangible Correct. as opposed to someone's perception of it. Correct. And if the person who you signed the deal with left, you are putting things in place so the next person aboard sees the value you're offering, and you're really offering an education system also. Exactly, and that's and, worth money. That's and worth what something. We, what we were talking about through that that staff meeting this morning is that every year we do a, a an accumulation of all of the partner brands. And every single thing that they did at retail, and we put it in one huge document, cool. and we showcase that to our executives to let them understand not just what our partners are receiving from the Braves brand in the market, but what the Braves brand right. is receiving from our partners yep. and the symbiotic relationship that's there. That's mutually beneficial. It's our yeah. media for us, right? Yeah. I mean, that's how, that's how you grow a brand. Right. Mm-hmm. That's mutually beneficial. And, and in partnership these days, there's so much, there's so much stuff going on. That if you can truly formulate a mutually beneficial partnership, the chances of renewal, extension, long term, are just exponentially higher. Um, so, so, tell us how, when sometimes it goes wrong about some clients, not specifically that just don't get it. But I don't want to do horror stories. But right. I mean, I can name ten right now. But I'd rather hear from you guys. <laughs> tell us about clients where or, where they did the wrong things or some things you see that are red flags that are just they're going about it wrong. And I'm great putting question. them completely on the spot here. So this That's might a be a great question. To your point, I think that in the last few years, I'm starting to notice a little bit of a correction of what I used to say was a a mistake that a lot of marketers made. I thought a lot of marketers, to your point on data earlier, you struck a chord. A lot of marketers got so into social media and that, that influx of money into that space, I don't think mm-hmm. there was... In a lot of organizations, the plan wasn't as sound there. And, and if you think about how... Now, these days, I think we're seeing a little bit of a correction of that where people are being really thoughtful about how they spend their social dollars. Yeah. It's and, an amplification method, yeah, and not now, a marketing medium. And they're to thinking that. about how do I differentiate in this space? Well, that's the key I word. I just need to get in. Yeah, that's the key word because, you know, going back to the licensing issue I, I dealt with many times, you know, the one I brought up before, but on social media, it's a lot harder to get that differentiation and, and sometimes maybe, you know, stand out that you're a licensed it's, it's also it's also higher risk reward, right? Because yeah. there's always the chance that that piece goes viral, and I think that's something that really played in. That was you know it's it's similar to nil nowadays. Like you get a kid at 18 years old. Yeah. What if they are the starting quarterback of Georgia? So social media, you don't know what's going to go viral. I know there are courses and a million people telling you, but it is not in Facebook's best interest for you to know what's going to no go viral. Right. That. that algorithm is yeah. constantly changing yep. to make Facebook more money. So you're almost taking a risk there. Well, if it goes viral, then that could be reward. That could be 10 times the value you paid for it. But if it doesn't, it could be one third the value. So I think a lot of that experimentation is starting to fill itself out. And it's become more of a, you can't put all your eggs into that basket, but you don't have to have to know how to properly use it. Well, you think about it, for my seat, what do we offer in that space? Obviously, we are the differentiator. So I think that's why we're a little aware of that. Because if we tried to compete on CPM rates, we're we're just not going to be there. We're not. You don't come to the Braves to post some ad on the Braves site. It doesn't work. It's not how social Impressions are not, impressions are not the way right. to evaluate so we the become, sports sponsorship. Let's we become that entirely that. focused on how do we provide content integration. And so I think we're a little bit at the, at, we're getting so much better at that in the last few years, whereas where that was that huge spike in social uh, dollar influx. Mm-hmm. It just seemed kind of, from a from a grand scale, it seemed mm-hmm. haphazard. Yeah. And, and, um, and so I think there's been a, a good correction amongst marketers to, to really think about how that is cohesive with the rest of their plan. Yeah. And it um, usually starts, right, those corrections usually start on a national level and then funnel themselves down locally. So your Home Depots of the world are going to make that correction before it starts coming to local yeah. markets. We deal with it in radio all the time. It starts right. at the top, yeah. and then it'll funnel its way down. And I agree with you. On that note, let's just a second talk about data. Is there a moment in your guys' head where you realized, like, how important data was going to be? It was it six, seven years ago, ten years ago, where you realized – oh my goodness, we need to change this approach because right now we're going in guns blazing from the hip with pictures and these people want more data. Now, they don't know what to do with the data. There's one, usually one asshole at the top that thinks they know everything about it that's trying to overrun the marketing department by spitting this data out. But is there a moment in your guy's head where you realized that how, how important that data was going to become? Yeah, for me, uh, I think it was having, I mean, some of my previous jobs, not having... Uh, metrics and tangible deliverables from signage and what it meant on TV coming to the Braves when we did where we did subscribe to some helpful tools yeah. that, that earn helped media, us earn media and all yeah that it was stuff. a big enough deal where home plate rotational as an example is a, is a huge piece for us and there's there's a lot of partners that have stake in those types of assets and so coming over to the Braves and that was 12 years ago I mean imagine how the data right. has right. become more sophisticated in that time yeah. coming over to the Braves uh, 
where all of a sudden I have this tool and I can say, look, if you buy this sign and it feels like you're just slapping a logo somewhere, the, the greatest brands out there marketing are doing this type of thing, not because they have crazy budgets. They report to boards, too, that, that expect them to, ju- to justify every dollar they spend. They're doing it because of the metrics they're seeing on the back end. The, the ROI is there. Get yeah. From... You ROI know, is a tough thing to gauge, though, because you're talking about yeah. eyeball. So all right, it's, 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 they have the brand affiliation with something that they're passionate about, and you can gain the, the exposure and the earned media from that. Yeah. Did it drive sales? It is very, 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 very hard to directly correlate. <laughs> right. sign, unless I'm wrong, unless you guys have some magic that I don't no, know about. There is some magic. There, yes. there's, there's some method to the madness, at least. Uh, so, so Nielsen, uh, 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 this won't be any surprise to a lot of the listeners, but Nielsen, uh, they're, in, they're in the business of measuring everything. And one of their... I say one of their pieces. Yeah, one of the things that 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 uh, they provide, and there's a lot of other providers in this space that 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 provide similar metrics. And in fact, there are a lot of companies, software businesses, that are tasking AI to this to trying to track logos on on uh, all sorts of different yep. uh, channels to try to actually fill in some of the gaps that these traditional pieces like Nielsen and some of those companies can't can't quite wrap their hands around. But if you think about it, uh, you see a logo behind home plate or a, or a sign or an advertisement, whatever that would be. That's obviously going to be the broadcast to our home RSN and then the opponent as well. So if we're playing the Dodgers, then Southern California, you're getting you that LA it Sunday night game on ESPN. You're going nationwide right. and right. Apple TV now. You have the streamers that are changing yeah. how, how far the reach goes. Right. And we're on the East Coast. So we get New York and we get Boston and D.C. and some good markets that, that help us. And they give us, based on duration of that logo on screen, plus the ratings points in those markets, they give us a, a value for what that would cost you in, in those marketplaces. And then they also put a, a, a score on it to showcase that, hey, this is not full media. Right. This is not telling right. a, a full message. This is a sign in a, a, you know, 20% of the screen. Well, somebody blocking right. in yeah. halfway scene, did it only show up for half a exactly. second here? Yeah. And then and they, they essentially give you like right. a, a uh, value. recommended value or yeah. recommended price point. And that's extremely helpful to us when we are talking to someone, particularly who's new in sports marketing, who's been kicking the tires on yeah. this. They're looking for mm-hmm. ways to differentiate. Yeah. And um, it's not going to get them into it, but it'll overcome objections and reluctance. Exactly. exactly. It'll help them and, and, gear up for their leadership's questions. And, and they need to answer a few of the hard questions because the normal one that comes in is, hey, uh, my boss asked me to look at this. He's been a huge fan. And our sales team are saying, hey, our competitors uh, are seeing X, Y, and Z brand. So we need to understand it. So, um, And maybe when we come back from the break, we'll kind of dive into that a little bit of, you know, what are some other ways to, with the data, to um, be able to differentiate for for certain sponsors and clients. So you're listening to the Marketing Mad Men on Extra 106.3. We'll be right back. The 2024 Subaru Outback is designed to take you anywhere you want to go. And it's available with low 1.9% APR financing with complimentary maintenance included at Subaru of Gwinnett. Discover the many reasons to love a Subaru Outback. Advanced technology features for added safety, tough, sophisticated styling, standard symmetrical all-wheel drive, and a 2023 IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus. Get out there and go places in a Subaru Outback. Adventure never looks so good. Go to SubaruofGwinnett.com to learn more. Hey, Atlanta, Hudson Mason here. Is a new roof still on your to-do list, but you've been delayed due to rising home service costs? Well, here's a fantastic solution from Accent Roofing Service. Zero down, zero payments, and zero interest for a full year. That's right. You can get your new roof now and start paying next year. Act quickly because Accent's incredible offer of zero, zero, zero with a 12-month deferred payment option for a lifetime roof system isn't going to last long. Contact the craftsman at Accent Roofing Service today, accentroofingservice.com. Now back to the Marketing Mad Men on Extra 106.3 FM. Welcome back to the Marketing Mad Men. Nick Constantino here and Trip Job. We are with Chad Clark and Drew King of the Braves, and we've had a great discussion. Um, we've gone all over the place, as we usually do. I, I think our, I could just rip up our, our questions <laughs> and our schedule because we've got completely <laughs> we botched that. Um, but, but Chad, so yeah. we're on radio, okay? I'm a radio guy. You're a radio guy. Talk a little bit about how radio fits into this, because with all of the broadcast rights on TV just being so up in the air across sports, with some of the nostalgia Drew talked about, how people love that radio connection, some of the best broadcasters ever, we're we're radio broadcasters, talk about that, because I don't think, I I cannot believe the growth that I've seen in radio with 12 to 17 year olds being the number one source of Brave, they're listening to Braves, they're not listening to radio stations at 8, 9 o'clock at night, they're listening to Braves radio, they're falling asleep to it, they're syncing their TVs up so that 
TV is on, but the radio it's, is coming through. Yeah. So just just let's gloat for a second. And let's explain just how important radio is to all of this. Well, baseball, I mean, baseball and radio started together. I mean, when, when baseball started, you know, hundreds of years ago, I mean, it was radio that, that brought those games, if you weren't there, to, to mm -hmm. those fans. And so when you dovetail that into – and to Braves Radio, and you think about the history that's behind that with Skip Carey and Pete Van Weeren and, and the network that we have in 170 affiliates in eight, in eight states, it is, um, it's a juggernaut when you think about what we have. And the fragmentation of what TV is doing right now and how fragmented it is. People pulled mm -hmm. the cable. They can't get it on YouTube. You have to go get FUBU. I mean, there's so many different yeah. ways to try and And they're not doing a good job that. of telling you that. You don't have that in radio. You, you have they're no not, idea. Yeah, you have but, no idea who's got what, where's FUBU. But you don't have that in radio. And the beautiful thing about that is, is you know where you can go. You've got an app. Yeah. You've got a flagship. And you've right. got 170 affiliates no matter where you are in the world. So you can pull up Braves Radio. The great thing about radio as well is the storytelling behind it yeah. and the way our broadcasters deliver uh, the play-by-play -play to our fans. So I challenge the listeners to watch it on TV one night and then listen to it on the radio and listen to the difference of the broadcasters and how it's delivered oh. to you. Yeah, and do you On think radio, it's more of a soap opera. It's six days a week. And every game is different. Every episode is you different. You set me up perfectly. Yeah. The question, I, the challenge I have for you is listen to Braves Radio and it's tell awesome. me if you have a clue how good-looking Ben Ingram is. <laughs> By listening <laughs> to radio, because he could be a soap opera star. The not just because of the voice. voice. That, that, that might be a really good, good activation yeah. for we, one of our partners. Oh, you know, yeah. Yeah. Coming up with new things as we go, baby. Okay, with, with, with that, we're going yeah. to we're, we're shift gears quickly before we get in trouble. And yes. uh, Drew, you're a, a baseball historian, and last year... We had probably the most in number and definitely in significant rule changes since the 60s and the pitcher's mound being a uh, lord. Uh, tell me what you think. Yeah, you guys uh, uh, teed me up as a historian, and I don't know if I would call myself that. I'm, I'm definitely a purist as it relates to the game. I played it, I coached it, and I had the kind of unique uh, background of umpiring it for quite a, a bit of time. It was At one point, I was going to go to... Windlestead and try and oh, wow. go after minor league baseball back in college, but fortunately <laughs> got my break in sports and didn't have to do that. Um, but, you know, to your point, baseball's last big round of rule changes was right at the turn of the 19th century. And that's it, 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 there's been changes along the way. The mound's gone up. The mound's gone down. The, the, a lot of equipment changes, a lot of stat scoring things along the way, like sacrifice fly and how that's yeah. ruled and things like that. But the, the way the game is played really hasn't changed much since 1900. Yeah. So to give you some context for that, three decades later, the hash marks were added to football. Seven decades later, they moved the goalpost back to the back of the end zone, so in the 70s. Yeah. And eight decades later, we see a three-point line added in NBA. Yeah. So as a purist, initially the idea of changing the game, you know, I, it, it, was, it was hard to kind of open up to it first. But the more I watch and the more I'm, you know, I'm obviously watching this game every single day and I'm here for the great, awesome finish, walk-off win, and I'm also here for the four and a half hour drag on game where a relief pitcher is taking two minutes to throw a pitch and you start realizing like okay there are some things we could tweak that mm -hmm. that could change things and every sport does this to try to maximize the way the game's played and make the game as as uh as fan friendly as possible and something that you want to tune into and so this past year for the for the folks who don't know what baseball did uh theo epstein who was the Cubs and Red Sox mm. GM who took both of those franchises to a title. Not one of the things he's doing now, he's working with the league on evaluating and doing all the analysis in the minors on what different rule changes do to impact the way the game is played. So some things that did occur were the pitch clock. Mm. So we went to a 15-second awesome. pitch clock in 20 seconds if there's a runner on base, which had immediate impact in shaving some minutes off the game. Um, <laughs> anecdotally, I, I think, you know, Chad and I would be in the suite talking with a partner, and you're having this conversation, and there was a cadence to watch a pitch, talk a little bit, yeah. you know, go back and forth, watch another pitch. It's like a nice waltz. Yeah. 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 And, and this year, the there was an adjustment. I mean, we found ourselves yeah. missing, missing pitches quite a bit right. and having to re – you can't take your eye off the field quite the, quite the same. Um, defensive realignment, which is, is going to try to address the three true outcomes, like trying to get the ball in play a little bit more. And uh, bigger bases, 18 inches instead of 12. And, and where this all came from was Epstein did all these uh, these research studies on what do fans truly want to see in the sport. The number one thing they re responded was triples. 
Number two was doubles. And number three was stolen bases. Well, two of those things are hard to address. The third one, you can actually impact that, right? So the, the base is being larger. You can't really see it when you're watching a game at the park. But you think about what that four and a half inch gap does to closing in on second base. Yeah. Most of these things are, but you're talking about yeah. literally those inches are, can impact the game by 10, 20 percent at times. And and what the reaction, the, what the result was, was games dropped in tw- by 25 minutes. Which, if you're a huge baseball fan, you're like, well, is that a good thing? It actually it is because you can reliably watch a game within a certain window. Uh, it really cut back on those just slog games that are three and four hours. You just it don't really, see a four-hour game The tested next ADD. Yeah. yeah. The, fan watches, the fan watches a lot more intently now. Yeah, Yeah, you can't miss as much of the action. So so um, you, we've had some, on our end of sponsorships and delivering assets that are integrated and all that, we've had some wins and losses along the way uh, that are kind of interested in, in, interesting. By and large, this has been a huge win for the sport. Attendance is up league-wide. Ratings are up. Um, it, the interest level to baseball is, is is as healthy as it's been in a long, long time, and um, and it, it, it's it's just in a terrific place as a sport. Um, and uh, so yeah, so it's it's all okay. been great. They've tinkered with other ideas that uh, they did not implement because of whatever impacts were you know in the to try to add triples and doubles and things like do you do you do you require a certain outfield alignment and that's right. wow. some of the things they've considered and they have not gone that far but um so more to come though it sounds like yeah and, oh. and but to date i think uh to date i think the changes have been phenomenal um obviously increased ratings is never going to hurt <laughs> and uh more eyeballs yeah. uh we are sold to the brim attendance wise for the braves and the league is feeling bumps across the uh, the way in terms of just the yeah. way the game is played cool um, um chad we got about one minute left um on the radio side uh give us some ideas what what's coming this year what do we want to look out for coming to the ballpark this year just in general or in general or yeah, you know, so i mean well working. this weekend uh well actually this isn't going to air uh then so but anyway um Coming new to the ballpark this year, you're going to see a lot of capital improvements, which is going to be nice. Our fans are going to enjoy um, uh, some more swift, efficient concessions. Uh, we've got uh, a new partner branding our terrace level uh, and our new premium boxes, mm-hmm. which is going to be fantastic. There's been a major demand over the last five, six, seven years for premium experiences. A lot of people that want to go to uh, – professional sporting events anymore don't want to sit in the four 300 levels anymore they want a premium experience so mm-hmm. that's been really good for us people have the opportunity to build out more in the stadium to offer those to our fans uh so that's one big thing coming coming about on the radio network we're still just plugging along um you know working closely with uh with ed kennedy and trying to fit in our marketing department trying to figure out how to make that network more robust you know you think about 170 stations yeah. in eight states right. how do you do that like, how much more yeah. robust can you get? Well, the Southeast is is a big area, and we've got a lot of Braves fans. I know that that's we can That's where data yeah. helps. And that digital data, data, pulling in those zip codes, knowing yep. where there yeah. are gaps, knowing where there's listenership, yeah. that integration of data is going to really help. Yeah. 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 Well, hey, um, Chad Clark, Drew King, thanks so much yeah, thank for the you Atlanta guys. Braves. It was a pleasure. On the radio side, you've been listening to the Marketing Mad Men on Extra 106.3, and we'll be back next week. There are hundreds of families who need help with their loved ones. As part of our Subaru Love Promise, Subaru of Gwinnett has partnered with Plan Pethood to help with animal transportation, adoption fees and clinics, and outreach vaccine clinics to help create a better world for animals. We've supported over 320 animals, 541 vaccinations, and 211 microchips during our Subaru Loves Pets Month initiative. To learn more about how we support our furry friends, go to SubaruofGwinnett.com. Hey, Atlanta, Hudson Mason here. Is a new roof still on your to-do list, but you've been delayed due to rising home service costs? Well, here's a fantastic solution from Accent Roofing Service. Zero down, zero payments, and zero interest for a full year. That's right. You can get your new roof now and start paying next year. Act quickly because Accent's incredible offer of zero, zero, zero with a 12-month deferred payment option for a lifetime roof system isn't going to last long. Contact the craftsman at Accent Roofing Service today, accentroofingservice.com. 
Finding your direction, a career path, can be difficult. There's so many choices. Check out Life University and explore your options at their Eagle Madness Preview Day on Saturday, March 2nd. It's your opportunity to spend the day learning about their unique undergraduate programs like culinary nutrition, biology, business administration, and more. Come discover exciting majors and talk to current students and faculty at our beautiful Marietta campus. We'd love to see you at our Eagle Madness Preview Day on March 2nd. For more details and to register, visit life.edu slash join today.